Professor Spectrum, experts in spectral technology. Welcome back to Professor Spectrum. I'm Naomi Potter and I work at Portable Spectral Services as a spectral geologist. And I'm Sophie Sharoni and I work as a spectral analyst. And today we're going to be answering some of the commonly Google questions around portable X-ray analysis. So here at Portable Spectral Services, we have a variety of portable X-ray instruments that we can hire out. We also sell Brooker portable X-ray instruments and we offer a variety of services including custom calibrations, servicing and training. So how does XRF work? So X-ray fluorescence works by sending an X-ray down to your sample. It then ionizes the atoms within that sample and those atoms when they're ionized release a energy peak which is called fluorescence. That energy is then captured by the instrument and then is turned into a spectra, which is what we see on the instrument in the form of numbers. Is XRF dangerous? So X-rays can be dangerous um, in the sense that X-rays are a form of ionizing radiation and ionizing radiation is bad for us. However, XRF instrumentation is not inherently dangerous because the way the instrument is designed and the way you use the instrument means that you are getting a very minimal exposure to radiation that's very minor in comparison to what you're getting in day-to-day -day life anyway. Are there any regulations around the safe use? Do you have to use PPE? You don't have to use PPE because the amount of radiation produced by the instrument in terms of background is so low that you don't have to wear PPE um, equipment or anything like that, but there are still licensing requirements for XRF instruments because of the fact that it does produce x-rays. Cool. So it means we need to receive training. Yes, okay. training is very important to make yeah. sure that you know how to use the instrument correctly so that you don't cause any harm to yourself or others. All right, all right, next up. Is XRF destructive? XRF fundamentally is not a destructive technique. What it's doing is it's ionizing the atoms at the surface of your sample, which doesn't cause any damage to the actual atoms in that material. Cool, all right. Why can't XRF detect light elements? So portable XRF instruments can detect a lot of elements on the periodic table, the lightest element of which is sodium. Um, that's by the Brooker Tracer 5. The majority of portable XRF instruments can only detect down to magnesium. But the reason that we can't get any elements that are lighter than that is because the fluorescent signal that comes from those elements and is getting sent from the sample up to the detector is too weak. So essentially the air that's between the sample and the detector is essentially too dense and too heavy that the X-ray, the fluorescence can't actually reach the detector and that's why we can't measure any elements lighter than sodium at this point in time. Oh, so we can't detect lithium then? No, so lithium is a very light element so we can't detect it using a portable X-ray instrument. However, there are ways to get around that. So one of the things that Portable Spectral Services has developed is a lithium calibration, which is essentially using other elements that the portable X-ray instrument can analyze to provide a prediction for the lithium content within those samples. So it can still be used for field analysis? Yes, yep. So you can still use it in the field um, to get an indication of your lithium content of your rocks. Oh, that's great. Is XRF quantitative? Yes, XRF is quantitative, so that's one of the great benefits of XRF analysis is it actually quantifies the chemistry within your sample. So basically the height of the peaks associated with the elements present in your sample is directly proportional to the concentration of those elements in your sample. The way we actually convert that from a spectrum to what most people are accustomed with, which is the quantified numbers on the screen of the instrument, is through the use of calibrations which can be loaded on the handheld instruments that give you the results immediately in field as you finish each analysis. However, while the theory behind it is very straightforward to quantify the samples, there are some difficulties with things like the mineral matrix, so the type of sample you're analysing, the other elements that are present. And so there are often a range of different calibrations you can use based on the type of sampling you're analysing, whether or not you're looking at limestones or scrap metal or soils or you know, geology, exploration or agriculture. So one of the things that um, we can do, which is particularly great about the Brooker XRF instruments, 
is you can have access as the user of the instrument to the back end of the instrument. And what that means is you can create your own calibration uh, based on the specifics of the samples you want to analyze. And this has great implications with regards to increasing the accuracy of the calibration results. So we can do them in-house as well. They're fantastic if you've got specific concentrations or elements that are critical to your project that you want to improve your results for. So how much does having a custom calibration kind of improve the accuracy of your data in comparison to a standard? It can be very significant. So in some of the times, as we used to mention, with regards to uh, accuracy and precision, the accuracy is usually, as a general rule, if you're using something off the shelf that's got a broad application, is generally within plus or minus 20%. So in some cases, that is not fit for purpose for a specific project, in which case we can use a custom calibration and you can get it, provided you have great calibration samples, down to almost within 5% to 2%. So it's very, very significant, um, and particularly if you have those trunks of elements that often sit with overlaps or that aren't calibrated more properly in the off-the-shelf calibration, it just opens up the technique for you to be used on your project. Uh, why is XRF used? So XRF instruments are used for a variety of purposes. They're a very versatile instrument. Um, they're not specifically designed for one particular industry. They can be used across the board, so they're very common in um, scrap metal analyses, in mining industry, people use them in art and archaeology. Um, so they're a very versatile instrument. Some of the other benefits is that they're very rapid. So for different entries, for alloys, for example, it can take less than 10 seconds to get your analysis. Um, whereas for mining, it's close to 60 seconds, but that's still quite a fast analysis time, especially because you're getting your data there and then. You know, it's right there in your hands. So great for a decision making process. Yes. Yeah, yeah, you don't have to wait weeks for your data to come back to you, um, and you can interpret it straight away to make important decisions. Um, it's handheld, so you can take it to the field. Oh, oh, and it's fantastic, of course, because it's non destructive. So, if we're getting your chemical analysis without having to destroy your sample, which, of course, for something like arts and conservation, you obviously can't be destroying these priceless documents and artifacts. So, that in itself is, is a great benefit. Thanks for watching. I'm Naomi. And I'm Sophie. And we'll see you next time.